So, you guys have been sending in some questions about love, sex, and dating, and we're going to go for them. Uh, we're excited. Let me introduce my friends. Uh, this is, uh, what's your name? I'm Sean Gabris. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I forgot. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Kelsey Settle. Yeah. I'm Stacy Ginger. All right. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, so we, we're excited. We're going to Try and do. It. We're gonna at least respond to the questions that you have. It's a Q and R, not a Q and A. Um, we're gonna have some questions and responses, uh, and just kind of give you some of the things that we think, and some of the things that that we think God thinks. But what I want to make known and clear before we dive in is is I'm a lot less concerned about what they think than what you think at this point in your life. And so, really, this stuff only has merit and value if it causes you to think about what you think and what you believe. Because if you're just like, well, my leaders and the people at church think this, that's not gonna stick and it's not gonna last. And so you need to really ask yourself, okay, do I agree with that? Like, does, do, do, do I believe that? Do I believe that's what God teaches? Do I believe that it's worth following that? We want this to be a, a series. We want these to be discussions and conversations that we have, same with the social media series, on where do you stand with this stuff? Because if it's just like, well, our leaders stand there, that's good, and hopefully you can take a little bit from it. But really, I think your life isn't really going to make that much of a difference unless you come to believe you know, on your own. Does that make sense? Okay, so hopefully this can kind of help facilitate discussion. Some of the questions we have in small groups, I'm already being long-winded, sorry. Um, some of the questions we have in small groups are literally, what would you say, literally, some of them are worded, what would you say if your friend asked you this question? What advice would you give? And so I just want you guys to be thinking about that. So Again, we're just going to ask the questions that you guys asked, and so we're going to start with Stacy. Uh, how are babies made, Stacy? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> so basically, I think um, a husband and a wife, they just ask God for a baby, and God gives them a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, no, but really, um, basically, a man has sperm and a woman has an egg and they have to have sex to have a baby. Yeah, so there's the, kind of the biology between how babies are made. Um, one of you guys asked it. We didn't ask it. One of you guys asked it. Uh, and kind of in line with that, um, it was about 12 and a half weeks ago, a sperm met with an egg and me and Abby got pregnant, so we're excited. Um, so yeah, so we're, uh, we're very excited. Uh, the first trimester is officially over. We're going to be having a child early September, Lord willing. And so, uh, yeah, if you could be praying for that, very excited. Um, fired up about it. There she is. Did you guys not know? I just heard you. I thought you guys knew, yeah. Yeah, we're excited. So it's going to be fun. Anyways, we're going to keep going. Uh, one of the questions was, Sean, uh, does sex feel good? Oh. So, yes. I know from personal experience. My wife's online. Hey there. <laughs> hey, hey, babes. I have two babies. Hello so yes, the answer is yes. Yes, absolutely. It is very, very, uh, very, feels very good. Yeah. Okay. So here's, here's, here's why we say that. Okay. And some of you are like, oh, this is weird. Uh, here's why we say that. Here's some of the messaging I think that you've received maybe, or at least sometimes churches give out when you're young. It's like, you hear from culture, sex is great, go do whatever you want, go wild, and then you come to church and you hear sex is dirty, gross, nasty, horrible, but you should save it for the one you love most. And that, that message isn't the message of the Bible. The message is that sex is a gift from God and it's beautiful and it's holy and it's great and it's, it's something that's to be enjoyed within the context of the way that he created it. And so we don't want you guys to come to this series and be afraid of it and be like, oh man, I can't even, that's, that's, not, that's not the message at all. The message is that sex is a beautiful thing. It's a God-given thing, but it gets really distorted and when we distort it, it leads to some pretty jacked up stuff in our lives. And so again, I know it's silly and one of you guys asked the question, I'm sure you were just goofing around wanting to be funny, but I think it's honestly a good question to come to grips with. Yeah, sex feels good, it's a great thing, it's a gift from God, it was given to, it was given to him by us to enjoy in the context of marriage between a man and a woman. Uh, Kelsey, uh, is premarital hand-holding okay? Um, <laughs> is premarital... <laughs> Uh, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think premarital hand holding is great. I've held hands with boyfriends, and I plan on holding hands with future boyfriends. Um, but 
if you don't want to and that's a boundary you have, that is perfectly okay too. Um, I think you just have to check your heart. Awesome. Okay. So there, there, are some, there are some answers to some maybe questions that you thought were silly, but maybe those are things that you need to think through. Uh, is dating in middle school or high school bad? Is, is it a bad thing? Like, what, what do you guys think about that? that? That was actually asked a bunch by some of our students. So is it a bad thing for middle schoolers and high schoolers to date? I don't care what order you guys go in. I'll take the first one. Um, I think that really it comes down to your intentions. Um, like, what, what do you have in mind when you're going into it? Um, do you just want to have the status kind of thing? Like, oh, I'm dating this person, so that's why I'm doing it. Um, do you have... You just want to hook up with somebody. I mean, there are plenty of reasons in high schoolers mind. I was there once, crossed my mind as well. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think dating in high school is necessarily bad, but I think it's super hard to do correctly. And it's really hard to do it the way that God tells us to do it, opposed to the way that we see on TV or we see on Instagram or whatever it may be. Um, I think you just have to really in like be intentional and ask myself, why am I dating? Who am I dating? What am I dating like? You know, like, you just have to try very hard at it. And um, I think I know a few people who have waited to date until they were out of high school, and no one that I know who did that regretted it. No one was like, oh, I wish I would have dated in high school. That would have been so fun. I've never heard that. Um, but I do know, and I can speak from personal experience, there's plenty of people who did date in high school and wish they, want, wish they would have waited. So I'd say if you're questioning it, um, erring on the side of waiting is probably going to be a safer bet. Yeah. And so a lot of what you guys just mentioned and a lot of what we kind of talked about before we came up here was the idea of intention. Why are you doing it? Um, what's the process like? Why is the process even in place for you? And so, so, you know, they kind of talked about like, are you doing it because like the way that God wants you to do it? And so I think really the question that we had for you, Stacy, is what, what is the purpose of dating? If they're saying, yes, I'm going to date for the right reasons, what would be the right reason or reasons to date in the first place? Yeah, so I think that going into it, I think basically that your intention should be to marry. And I know that sounds like as a middle schooler or a high schooler, it sounds crazy and overwhelming and forever away. And I, I hear that, but I don't think that we go in dating a person thinking like, oh, I hope this doesn't work out. You know, everybody wants it to work out, and I feel like the deeper bond that you make, the deeper relationship that you grow to have, marriage is going to cross your mind. And it, I don't think that we ever go into relation. If you flip it, I don't think we ever go into relationship thinking, oh, I'm just going to date this person so I can break up with them later. Like, it sounds silly when you put it that way, so why wouldn't we look at marriage in the long term? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's big. Um, so, so when we're talking about dating with middle schoolers and high schoolers and we say you should date with marriage in mind, uh, I'm guessing some of you are like, that's insane. Um, that sounds crazy. Um, I don't really understand that. And so, like, I don't know. I don't even know the question that I have. But if I'm a student, I'm thinking, is that really realistic for me to even be thinking about at this point? And, and, and why should I think about it? Like, that just seems weird. Does anybody have anything to touch on w with that thought or question that I have? Yeah, I mean, I think it's realistic. It seems crazy probably, but I think everyone has a list of deal breakers for their future husband or future wife, and I think that's totally okay. You should have a set of standards, and even if it seems forever away, you can definitely cross a few things off your list right now. Um, do our beliefs line up? Is he going to push me towards Jesus? Does he respect his mom? Is he nice to his friends? Does she show patience? Like, I think there's some things that even though you guys are still going to grow and it, you know, it might be five years, 10 years, however long in the future, um, there are some boxes you can make sure they check that you know you want in a future husband. Like, hands down, my husband, I want this. Um, so I, de I definitely think you should just look through those lens from the very start. Yeah. And, and I think the idea of dating for, for marriage, or at least with marriage in mind, is a pretty overwhelming thought. But I like kind of the idea that Stacy hinted at is like, if you aren't, then what, then what are you doing? You're pretty much just preparing to eventually break up. 
You're like, okay, so we're going to date, and we're going to get really close. We're going to become best friends. We're going to text every day. We're going to talk every day. We're going to hang out all the time. A lot of times, we're going to ruin a bunch of other relationships because our life revolves around this relationship, and then one day, we're just going to end it. Like, seriously, if marriage isn't in mind, that's kind of the thought process, and I think it kind of sets yourself up for a little bit of failure. And then we talked about how like singleness provides a foundation and kind of develops some habits for what your love, sex, and dating life will be like. But I also think dating does the same thing for your marriage life. And I think a lot of times when we date a bunch in middle school and high school, it's like we develop the habit of like, okay, if you annoy me, if, if one day I don't think you look that good or whatever it is, I'm going to break up with you. And you can't, you're, you're developing a horrible habit like for when you actually get married and that isn't an option anymore. And so I would say, yes, be very, very careful when it comes to dating. Might not be a horrible thing, but you need to evaluate why you're doing it. And when you do it, yeah, I would have kind of the end goal of marriage in mind, even if that seems insane and crazy. Um, okay, here was a big one. A, a lot of you guys didn't ask this word for word, but you, you touched on this, and I want you guys to lean in, pay attention, um, and it was this. Uh, is, or I guess better worded, what's the big deal about hooking up, especially if we aren't like going all the way and having sex? Like, what is the, what's the big deal? So, <clears throat> anything physically is really going to um, just tie you up emotionally with the person, and that clouds a lot of judgment. And so um, I think that it's just intelligent to stray away from that because a lot of the times those, those relationships are just going to a lot of times fall apart after, like in a high school setting. And so tying yourself with somebody that closely, it just is going to set you up for a lot of heartache and pain whenever... Um, a situation like that ends. Yeah. So. It's good. Um, yeah, I, I agree with what Sean said, and I think, too, that um, a lot of times if the relationship is just based around hooking up, it's like even if you go into it and you're like, oh, I'm not going to catch feelings, like I am not, you know, whatever, someone's going to catch feelings, someone's going to get emotionally involved, and... Um, it's almost impossible to um, not have that happen. And you're just setting yourself up to get a broken heart, pretty much. And I think on the flip side, if you use your feelings to justify it, like, I love this person. I'm going to marry this person. Like, I'm going to be really honest. You're probably not. And I know what you're thinking right now because I thought the same exact thing in high school. Like, no, 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 I really am going to marry, like, the guy I'm dating. I thought that too. Same. So <laughs> it's a totally normal thought to think that, but, like, your actions shouldn't reflect that. That needs to wait no matter how confident you are um, because when that breakup no offense, probably does come. There's just going to be so much more emotional baggage and things to get through, and there's going to be, um, it's just going to be a lot messier and harder and sadder, and it's just not good. Yeah, and then, and then you know, obviously, you know what they would believe about this is a lot of them are your, they're your small group leaders, but, um, I mean, we talked about it last week. I mean, God makes it clear that it's, 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 it's wrong. It's outside of his parameters. It's, it's, it's sin. Anything that caused you to look at someone uh, in a lustful way, in a way that is overtly sexual, it's, 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 it's sin. It's, it's wrong. But I, I want to just, you guys already know what we believe about that. We've said that. We've made it really, really clear, especially last week and the week before. We'll talk about it some more next week. But let's talk about it even from a non like the Bible says this, okay? Here's the way that I think a lot of us think, and this is what I thought when I was a student, okay? So I'm gonna get real and a little bit vulnerable here for a moment, okay? My freshman year, I was a goody two-shoes kid. The idea of ever hooking up with a girl or doing something like that was completely foreign to me. I didn't even know what it meant, okay? Dated Abby, freshman year of high school, it took me three months to hold her hand, was horrified, okay? Started sweating every time I saw her. Every time she called, it freaked me out, okay? And and so, so I was like, there's just, there's just, there, I, there's no way. But then there's kind of a slippery slope. Then you kind of hold hands. I'm not saying you can't hold hands, but then holding hands would lead into this and lead to that. And then before you know it, I was just like, we're just going to make out. Okay. So we're just going to kiss with our mouths open. 
Okay, that's what we're going to do. And it's just going to stop there. Okay, it's going to stop there. And, and I told you I'm going to get kind of a little more real for a second. Okay, and, and, and here's what I, here's what I want to say. It never stops there. It never stops there. I've never heard someone who dated for a significant amount of time say, yeah, we just had some make, we just had make out sessions for six months straight. Hands never wandered, never did anything else, never thought those thoughts, never went further. Sin is progressive. Sexual sin is always progressive and it always leaves you wanting more. And so if you're like, well, we're just going to kiss for a while, pretty soon that's going to be well, it won't be boring, but you get what I'm saying, okay? You're gonna, something else is gonna be at least more appetizing. You're gonna be like, well, that, I wanna do that. I wanna do that. I wanna do that. And then before you know it, hear me on this. Even if you're a goody two-shoes, I know it from experience. If you let boundaries slide, you're gonna eventually find yourself in a place where you thought, how did I ever get here? How did I get here? How did I get here? Freshman year, horrified to hold someone's hand, wanted, wanted to honor God when I had these conversations. And then junior year, here's a story for you, okay? I, I'm in Abby's car, okay? Or actually, we're in my car. And it's, it's about 2.30 in the morning, and we are whatever, okay? You know, kissing and whatever, hooking up. And, and I remember it's like 2.30 in the morning, okay? And we're on the side of the street, and I see a big truck coming at me, massive truck coming at me. It's like, literally, we're talking at this point. And there's a car coming, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Before you know it, this car that's going like 30 miles per hour smokes the front of my car, smokes the front of my car in the middle of the night, okay? Almost totals my car. There's glass everywhere, all jacked up, and I'm like, oh my goodness, what in the world just happened? So I'm like, okay, we got to sneak in. We got to get your mom's car, I get your keys, and you got to drive me home, and then I got to somehow make up a story for my parents. And her, her house is unlocked. Her house is unlocked. And, or, I'm sorry, her house is locked, so we can't get in. And so we, we have to start banging on the door just to get someone's keys. Abby's mom comes down, okay? Abby and I were dating at this point. Abby's mom comes down. I have to explain what the heck happened. We have to drive 15 minutes. I have to drive with now who's my mother-in-law, but it, at this point it was Abby's mom. She hated my guts, rightfully so. And, and we're, we drive home. I have, to, I have to knock on my parents' door, ask my, tell my pastor dad what just happened. And I remember on my drive home, okay, literally, the thought, the thought was this, as all of you guys would have it, how am I here? How did I get here? Goodness gracious, how am I in a car driving home having to explain to my dad, who I know is right, what just happened? I disobeyed him. I disobeyed God. How am I here? Two years ago, that would have never been a thought. Do you know how it happened? It happened where it's like, ah, it's no big deal. We'll go from holding hands. We'll go from kissing. We'll go from kissing to for 10 seconds to 30 seconds to 5 minutes to 10 minutes. And then, and then before you know it, we're in a car at 2.30 in the morning, and it happens just like that. And so you say, what's the big deal about making out? Here's the deal. First off, God says it's a big deal, but it's never just going to stop with that. It won't. And if you think it will, it's foolish, okay? And so that's just something to think about. Okay. Um, anyways, <laughs> about that, uh, let's keep going. Um, so how can we stay away from hooking up? Like if hooking up is a big deal, what are some practical pieces of advice as to how we can not do that in the context of dating? Or let's be real, some of us are tempted to do it when we don't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. I'll go. Um, I think the main thing is setting boundaries. And, um, and then following that, I think just going into a relationship, you have to be uh, a clear communicator on what you're wanting out of the relationship. So you need to let the other person know, hey, I'm saving myself until marriage. Um, this, these are the boundaries that I'm looking to have. And if you can't respect that, then we can't date. Um, and you have to have someone who respects that or else it, it's not going to work. Um, yeah, I would probably even take it a step farther that you, someone should really share those boundaries. Um, if, if I don't want um, to go to a certain point, um, I would hope that my boyfriend wouldn't want to either because um, I'm human and I mess up and I would hate in a moment of weakness um, for me to make a decision I regret. So knowing that you guys are both tag teaming it, you're both holding each other accountable and um, when one of you might stumble, 
you kind of have the other one there to um, keep you accountable. But then even beyond that, you guys are both human. You guys both mess up. You guys both you know, are tempted. So I'd say just eliminate the situation altogether. Um, you will never make the right decision 100% of the time if you're putting yourself in those environments and situations where you're constantly tempted. So you literally just can't even put yourself in an environment where that's possible. Right, to echo what um, they both said, like eliminating the moment, eliminating the moment before the moment is kind of like been something that's been effective for me and I'm sure everybody else that's experienced it, but like don't go in the basement. Um, don't go in a room or somewhere that's closed off away from other people. I think that's really good as just a ground rule from the beginning. Um, but specifically, um, some be super good to um, help prevent things like that from happening would be to bring other people into your relationship, um, have people hold you accountable, have a friend be like, hey man, um, whenever you are struggling with something, be like, I'm gonna shoot you a text or you shoot me a text every once in a while and be like, hey, I'm struggling, you should come over to my house so I can't do anything stupid. Yeah, that's a great thought. I, I, I've always said this and I've said this to people's faces where if a girl's like, hey, I'm dating this guy and whatever, and if I'm a good friend with the girl, I'll be like, so are they on board with not hooking up? And if they say no, my answer is, okay, well, you're gonna hook up then. You're, you're, you're just signing on the dotted line, well, sign me up for that. Because you're gonna have a moment of weakness, and it's gonna happen, and you're gonna get all the feels, and it's gonna be emotional. And so you're literally saying, okay, this is, what's, this is absolutely 100% going to happen if you date someone that isn't on board with the same values and that type of thing, which is another reason it goes back to the beginning. You gotta know what your values are first and foremost. Like some of this is like you guys are, to, well, boundaries. I don't know if I wanna do the boundaries. You guys gotta figure out um, for you on what you believe about um, sexuality and what that should look like in your life. Um, what is one piece of advice? What is one piece of advice that you would give to a student when it comes to dating or anything in the realm of love, sex, or dating. Can I do two? Sure. Okay. <laughs> First one, um, kind of echoing what Sean said, get people involved. Like from the start, start of the relationship, bring someone in so it's a habit. It's not something that you're dating someone for a year and now you're backtracking. Um, but dating's hard and it's messy and there's feelings involved so it gets confusing. And you guys are 16, you're not supposed to know how to date completely perfect. You need help, I need help. So you need to bring someone into your relationship from the start, someone who shares the same belief as you, um, who's gonna push you in your relationship towards Jesus, someone probably who's older and wiser, probably someone who's married, who's been through it, who can speak to it and just help you along the way. Cause like I said, it's, it's hard, it, dating's hard. Um, and then second, I would just be very mindful of um, how you're spending your time when you're dating. I think we touched on it a few weeks ago. You only get to do high school once, and it's, it can be really fun. Um, you guys meet some awesome friends. You have these great memories. And personally, I look back at this four-year chunk of my life where I have almost no pictures because my life was revolved around a guy who's no longer there. So just be intentional about not ditching your friends, not stopping going to football games, not losing your own hobbies, um, and giving that all up for someone, because you just never know. And um, I think that makes your relationship stronger when you each have your own interests, your own friends, and everything like that too. So um, just be aware of that. Me? Um, so yeah, going back to what I said earlier, I think that um, communication is, key and I think that being honest um, with yourself and with the other person uh, right away is very very important because if you guys are not on the same page it's it's not going to work out and it will probably be you that's changing and not that other person so just keep that in mind that you just want to be clear and be be bold with your words and be able to just tell them how you're feeling um, I would also say, um, similar to what Kelsey said, but setting, setting boundaries has definitely got to be one of the best options out there. Um, if you don't go in with the right mindset, then you're setting yourself up for failure. Um, so do that. Like I said, bring other people in, 
and I love communicating. I think you're going to use that in any relationship in your life that you, you go forward with. That's really good. Um, I would say this, okay, and this is kind of just came to my mind uh, when I was up here, which is normally not a good idea, but we're going to try. Um, so here's what I would say, and I, I don't have like a ton and ton and ton of like dating experience, so to speak, but I would say this. It gets really, really emotional, um, and you, you know, you can rush into like intimate conversations and intimate thoughts and different things like that. And so I would just say, be cool, like be cool. Okay, middle schoolers, high schoolers, chill out a little bit. Um, and what I, what I mean by that is like, don't take our conversation and be like, well, you need a date to marry, and then you, seventh grader, go to your girlfriend and be like, hey, just wanna let you know we're gonna get married one day. That would be weird, that would be really weird, and, 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 and I probably wouldn't do that. Um, I would even say this, if you're a junior in high school and you think maybe, just maybe, this is the person that I'm gonna marry, don't tell them that. <laughs> Don't, I'm serious, don't, don't tell them that. Don't, because here's the reality, the, 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 the odds are, again, you, 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 you probably won't. And if you do, great, praise God. But I just wouldn't have those conversations because let's say one day you decide that, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna marry them, so we're gonna break up, but you told them that you were gonna marry them, and it's really, really damaging to that person who now you're breaking up with, who you convinced that you were gonna marry. And so, so intimate conversations, I would say be really careful about intertwining your spiritual lives together as a freshman, sophomore, I, those type of things. I would just say just be really wise when it comes to becoming too intimate with people because it just makes the breakup and the rubbish that comes afterwards a whole lot worse and more painful. Um, just use wisdom. I, I don't know. I'm not saying you can't ever say anything like that, but I, I would say, well, maybe I am. Um, I would say st stay away from it. The reason I do is I've, I've actually, I, that happened to me. So I had one other real, like, kind of serious girlfriend. We dated, and we had the, kind of those type of conversations, and then I realized, well, I, that didn't end up happening, and then it, it uh, I think that probably was pretty painful for the girl who thought that maybe we were going to get married. So I would just say be careful with that. Um, last thing, and here's, I think this is really important. Um, why? why? Why do all this? Why, why follow Jesus? Because really we've, we've talked a lot for a few weeks about what we give up. And let's be honest, we've talked about what you sacrifice, what you're not going to do when it comes to dating, when it comes to sex and these different things. And so we've told you what you're sacrificing, but maybe now you're in here and you're like, what do I gain? What do I gain? What, what's in it for me if I actually do what you guys tell me to do? And so what, what is there, you know, when it comes to just the reward from following Jesus in regards to this topic? Um, yeah, I think a great marriage is the reward in it. Um, you know, you don't have to go to your future husband and say, Oh, you know, I've I've slept with this person and that person. Um, that doesn't have to be any baggage that comes into your marriage, and you can be just authentically you with your spouse. Um, and I really think that Jesus is is going to bless uh, you for that. Um, yeah, I would just say just like um, just like the the feeling of freedom, like from not having any kind of baggage is going to be one of the best things going into um, like your marriage that you are going to be with that person forever and say I don't have any regrets of anything in my past and there's nothing going to be holding me back emotionally or um, physically or anything that could be holding you back from um, relationships in, in, in your past. Yeah, and I, th I think if, like, marriage seems super far away, I think right now it protects you from, like, a lot of unnecessary hurt um, for yourself and for other people. Like Josh said, like, you know, you, I'm sure you guys don't want to hurt anyone. Um, it's going to save you from a lot of questions and confusion and comparison and thoughts that just aren't healthy and aren't what Jesus wants for us. Um, so even just like your day-to-day, -day, I think would be a lot better.
Yeah, and understanding that God is for you and for your joy and for your pleasure, and God's design for you is best. Like the times in my life where I look back on and say that was the funnest season of my life, it was when I was following Jesus. I wasn't necessarily perfect, but I was committed to following Christ. And I would say for you, if you're wanting to follow Jesus at all and you're saying I'm not going to follow you in regards to love, sex, and dating, you're miserable. Let's be honest. If there's an area of your life and you're saying, I want to follow Jesus, but this part, of, this part of my life is off limits to God, to the one who I claim to love most, that's going to bring pain and damage in that. And then the last thing I would say is this, and then we're going to watch a TikTok video before I forget. Um, yeah, and you're going to say something too. I'm gonna, I'll finish this and then you're going to come on up. Uh, here's what I would say. You don't know the reward. You don't know it. You don't know the reward. You don't know what God has for you. You don't know what God is laying on a platter saying, if you just trust me, if you follow me, this is what I have for you. And it might not be the stereotypical, well, sex is going to be really good when I get married if I don't have it before I get married. That might might not be the case. We don't know what the reward is. We don't don't know what it is. But I would say that there is one. Maybe maybe we're going to get it in heaven. Here's the deal. Maybe maybe you go through this life and say, I don't, first off, you're going to see it. You're going to feel it. There's freedom in following Jesus. But let's say you didn't. What a beautiful act of worship. What a beautiful act of worship. Saying, I trusted God. I believed God. I did what he told me to do, even when I didn't see what was going to pan out in the future. I trusted God. You will never, ever, ever regret, ever, if you're a Christian, following Jesus in any area of your life, but especially in the area of love, sex, and dating. Pastor Tom, come on up here. Share something. I just wanted you guys to know something why I love this series. What they're talking to you about <clears throat> is the same thing that we talk to adults about. Many of you come from a broken home. If you'd have followed some of this advice, your parents wouldn't have divorced. That's the seriousness of it. Some of the things, if, they, if we brought your mom or your dad up here and you're from a home that you had suffered from that, they would tell you these same things that they talked about. They wish they could have had a do-over. They wish they could have gone back. And the relationship with your dad, the relationship with your mom, it had been a totally different game for them. So we're just trying to speak truth to you, the same way that Herc would speak to a person that's 40 that's coming out of a busted relationship that wants the next one to be better, wants their second marriage to be better, or their third. It's the same exact things. They're not speaking to a middle schooler or a high schooler. They're speaking truth about this great gift that God gave us called sex and about this great mind that we have to use wisdom when we're attracted to other people, which is natural. So I want to just say a prayer for you guys that some of the decisions you make today will really have ramifications 10, 15 years down the road. And trust God, follow his way, and I promise you the path that you're on in 10 or 15 years will be one you will never, ever regret taking. So I want to say a prayer for you. Father, I pray your blessings, your wisdom, your compassion, your truth on every man and woman in this room, on every person that's watching online. This is just a, it's a complex area, God. It's a great gift that you gave us. And it is confusing, but you've told us there's a way to navigate through it. There's a time to navigate through it. There's words we can use to talk with one another to navigate through it. Dear Father, I thank you for the gift of love. I thank you for the gift that we can care about one another. But help us to be wise and to understand what stage we're in. Help us to give boundaries to it, just like we would anything else. Help us to to communicate what we feel for one another and what we should do in this area. And God, I think most of all, I'm going to ask you just to give us a wisdom that maybe we just don't have with this when our mind clicks off and we... We start not thinking with it. God, I pray for the the guy or the girl in here right now that struggles with these decisions. God, I can feel for them. You know that Kathy and I started dating when we were 14, Father. We struggled through all these things. Some of the things we did right, God, and some of them we did wrong. And some of them it took later on into our marriage to pay the price for. Father, I pray for this generation and our love for them that they follow you as best they can. I thank you for Josh. 
I thank you for the team that was up here today for their honesty. I thank you for a church that cares about students and that cares about families and their families. And I pray, dear God, that this generation gets this more right than my generation did. May they be a light. Father, I pray your blessings upon them. It is in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. And all God's people said, amen.